Hello everyone, I have the I aim to misbehave mastery achievement for you in this video and it is to destroy all enemy bases in the Temple of Unification mission on hard difficulty. So this mastery achievement is probably one of the easier mastery achievements to get. You aren't really being crushed by time, there's no uh, time pressure on you and you can just pretty much pile up a big Protoss force and move out. So I'm going to quickly show you what Protoss units I'm using here. I have the Zealot with the Whirlwind ability, I've got the Stalker with the Shield Regeneration ability, the Annihilator with the Shadow Cannon ability, the Dark Templar with the Shadow Fury ability, and the Energizer with the Speed Boost ability. And the Energizer is definitely very helpful later on in this mission, for me especially, because that Energizer has an attack and a uh, movement speed boost to all of your units. And you can use that as a pylon, so you can warp in your units anywhere on on the map wherever you are so that's definitely very helpful and I'm gonna quickly show you what I have for my allocated solarite so I have completely maxed out a starting supply so that's at plus 20 in the auxiliary systems and then I've got a plus or minus 10 percent construction time so I only have two of those slots selected and then I've got the orbital simulator selected the temporal field and then the chrono surge and uh, each of those costs 25 solarite to use so we're going to hop straight into things and what I'm going to be doing right at the beginning of this mission is I'm just going to be using phoenixes and stalkers. I'm just going to be doing that because they work out pretty well together and stalkers are really easy to micro too because of their blink ability. So once it starts getting damage you just blink it back behind the rest of the stalkers. It's easier, I think it's easier at least than having to separately move those units back and then they might run into other units and then die. And then uh, phoenixes are also very helpful because they've got that graviton beam so you can pick up enemy units those units won't be able to attack when they're picked up the phoenixes can attack those units at the same time that they're being picked up and your stalkers can also attack those units in the air so phoenixes and stalkers are a pretty good combo for the beginning of this mission and they're not very expensive to get either and then later on I'm gonna start incorporating some uh, energizers and then those annihilators into my army along with some zealots when I can. And then what I'm doing right now is I'm putting assimilators on all of the Vespian geysers because I want to make sure to uh, get as much gas as I can stockpiled, spot stockpiled right away. So basically you, I, I like to do this in co-op missions with Vorazun as well because uh, those assimilators with that ability they harvest that Vespian gas automatically and if your Nexus isn't even built at that expansion it doesn't matter because you're still going to be able to harvest that Vespian gas without probes long distance mining and it works out pretty darn well so I would definitely advise you guys to uh, do that do that little trick it's pretty darn helpful and then I'm also getting upgrades, the air weapons upgrade, level 1, right away from the cybernetics core. And I'm doing that just because I'm going to be using a lot of phoenixes in this playthrough. And uh, you definitely want to have that increased attack damage. And then I'm also going to be getting the air armor levels 1 as well for the phoenixes. And then I'm going to get level 2 for uh, the weapons and the armor again as well from the cybernetics core. And then when you have a chance, it's definitely advisable to use your Chrono Surge on buildings that are getting upgrades. But right from the start, I'm going to be using the Chrono Surge on my Nexus. And I don't do this very well. I should have saved. I shouldn't have grabbed this upgrade right now. I should have saved some more minerals for my probes. But it's very helpful to have a bunch of probes stocked in there, like I have right now in the lineup. And then you can Chrono Surge all of your you can basically fill up your supply line in one chrono surge and it helps a ton so that's that's what i should have done here but i just let the upgrade go and i didn't make a completely good use out of that chrono surge but it wasn't very bad either because i have 21 probes on the supply line now or 22 actually so it's working out good and then i'm going to go ahead and get the uh, ground weapons uh, level one starting to upgrade from one of those forges and eventually I'm going to start adding on uh, two more forges so I can get the armor, the ground armor upgrade and then the shield upgrade level one from those forges and then eventually get level two as well from the forges and as you can see that first wave came in 
and these phoenixes just picked up those units, except for maybe one of them, and then the stalkers were able to attack the ones on the ground and in the air at the same time, and that wave I don't think killed any of my units either. It's just pretty darn good combo, works out really well. So, and then this is something I like to do. I just like to blink down into this little spot right here and then start attacking one of these celestial locks. I'm not going to get it all the way because I make a little mistake up ahead and I uh, drag that back too many units, but uh, this is kind of what I just like to start doing is I start baiting back uh, these stalkers with my phoenixes and then pull them into the rest of my units and kill them really quickly. It's a pretty good, pretty good way to kind of clear this first celestial lock out just so you don't have to uh, face everything all at the same time. This is the mistake I made though. Uh, I engaged uh, too many units at the same time and then I baited this void ray over and that was that was kind of a mistake. And then I misclicked my stalkers but I ended up I actually ended up being able to get my stalkers to blink back up onto the high ground so they they ended up surviving and that was okay. But I don't have any more grava or I didn't at the time have any more graviton beams cooled down so I wasn't able to pick up those those stalkers but once I head back I should be able to again. I'm going to throw down some more forges like I said and then another gateway which will turn into a warp gate in a second here. Or a couple more gateways that is because I had a stockpile of minerals. And you probably want to do a better job than I'm doing at making sure your probes are continuously being built. <clears throat> Always make sure you have a probe going on both of your nexuses and then once you have your supply lines filled up then you don't need to worry about that anymore. But I. I definitely think that uh, having a probe going at all times is the best way to play because it's just you're going to get your economy going so much faster and you'll be able to take on the enemy forces that much easier because of it. Now the beauty of getting this mastery achievement is that you don't actually have to finish off this mission. I'm only going to end up capturing two of these celestial locks and then I'm going to be able to destroy both of the enemy bases, and then that's it. I, did, I get two Celestial Locks, I clear a path to both enemy bases, and then I get the Mastery Achievement. I don't even have to worry about the last three, uh, the last three s Celestial Locks, or getting that bonus objective that's uh, towards the back. So, very, very, very uh, helpful and works out quite well. Now I'm... Uh, warping all of my uh, gateways into warp gates and I'm going to chrono surge this forge here and I'm going to take off this attack upgrade oh, I misclicked there but I'm going to throw that onto this other forge as well the one that's being chrono surged right now just because I want to make best use out of that as possible and then now it ran out because it only lasts for 20 seconds but it, if you do it correctly make sure to have at least two upgrades online at the same time on the same forge at the same time when you chrono surge that way you can probably probably get both of those completed D depends on what you're upgrading and how long the, the upgrade time is but the research time that is but yeah I definitely throw down two upgrades at the same time so you can get a big chunk out of both of them and now I'm just throwing down some more supply or pylons that is so I don't get supply blocked and I tend to get supply blocked often because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> so, gotta do a better job of that. And now I'm gonna start moving out with these stalkers again so I can clear out this celestial lock once and for all and eventually start making my way forward to the enemy's base, the first enemy base. I make sure to pick up the immortal and I want him, or annihilator that is. I should definitely make sure to pick up this other annihilator, but it looks like my graviton beam maybe isn't activated. I'm not sure why my phoenixes are just sitting there. I guess I didn't have an activated, I didn't have any cooldown graviton beam, so I wasn't able to pick up that annihilator. But I'll have to make sure to do that next time, because those will completely eat through your stalkers if you're not careful. Then I'm gonna get the final air upgrade, the air armor level two upgrade from my cybernetics core, and then I am going to keep on uh, piling up those phoenixes and stalkers and clear out what I can when I can. As you can see this just works out super very very well. Just pick up these units and then like that you can just micro back, micro away from anything else that can damage your phoenixes and they can attack at the same time. It's really awesome. 
Then when you're uh, getting attacked like this, uh, this is where your temporal fields are going to come in handy. And I make sure to uh, try to get all of the big things or as much of the units as you can at the same time. So, for example, I focus down all these specters, the reapers, and then those stalkers, all in those temporal fields. So they that was the majority of the units, and I got them all. I probably should have tried to focus down that raven, but it looks like I was able to kill him pretty quick. And then the void ray wasn't much of a problem because I have so many phoenixes and stalkers that were able to kill it, focus it down right away. And right now would be a good time to use my Chrono Surge. And since I don't have uh, very many upgrades left, I'm just going to focus on getting a ton of Phoenixes worked out. So I already have two. Th that'll be three Phoenixes, four Phoenixes. And I'm just trying to throw as much money as, in, as I can into this uh, Stargate. That's five. Five Phoenixes. I almost got six Phoenixes out of that. That one Chrono Surge. So that's pretty darn, pretty darn awesome That how effective that is. Five Phoenixes just like that really uh, large or enlarges your army size. And then this is where I'm going to start throwing down those robotics uh, facilities because I want to make sure to start getting those annihilators and incorporating them into my army. I wasn't actually sure at first because I thought I could just move out with these stalkers and phoenixes but getting those annihilators was really smart because of their uh, ability which shoots that cannon and then uh, it does 200 damage over time or with multiple shots, but uh, it can attack, their special ability can attack ground or air units. And that's really awesome because, I mean, 200 damage to anything you want, like for example, carriers, and the range is really good on it too. So if you have a Colossus which has really good range, and your Immortal can't happen to, your Annihilator can't happen to reach it, the, that uh, ability that those Annihilators have can because it's, the range is just crazy. Pretty much anything you can see at least that I've noticed, those Annihilator's ability will be able to reach it. So, definitely make good use of that Annihilator ability. And all you have to do is click a hotkey, so whatever the hotkey is, you just uh, get used to the hotkey and you'll do fine. And something important that I did right here in this engagement is I make sure to blink back my Stalkers away from that Colossus and then focus down the Colossus with, with the Phoenixes because the Phoenixes can attack um, units that are tall enough or air units. <laughs> so basically the Colossus is kind of considered an air unit because it's so tall that the Phoenixes don't don't have to aim downwards to shoot at it. The downside is that Phoenixes cannot use their Graviton Beam on Colossus because they're so large but once again I mean you can still attack them because they're so tall. I kind of wasted, well I did, I wasted my money on getting that Dark Shrine. I'm not even going to really use Dark Templar in this playthrough. Maybe I'll create one or two, but it was kind of silly that I even uh, spent minerals to get that. It's just, I definitely just suggest stick with Stalkers, Phoenixes, Annihilators, and uh, those Energizers. You don't even have to use Zealots. I mean Zealots if you have a bunch of extra minerals, but... Yeah, I would definitely just stick with stick with what I said to stick with. <laughs> and then eventually, down by my expansion, I'm going to create a wall of uh, gateways, and I'm going to use them to uh, act as a shield in front of my photon cannons and Kadaren monoliths that I'm going to have up as defense. So as you can see, this is definitely really, really easy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not having any problems with this, and this may be difficult for some of you, and uh, but I, I, I think it should be pretty darn easy for anyone as long as you stay back, take your time, and you are going to start running out of minerals eventually. But if you just pile up a big uh, 200 supply force and then move out, you'll be able to take one of these enemy bases. And once you get that enemy base, that's when things get really easy because uh, there's another supply line at each enemy base. So as, you, as soon as you take out that enemy base, then you can move all your probes onto a new nexus. And then there's also uh, Vespian geysers as well there. So you'll be able to get re, refill up on minerals and gas as soon as you take one of those enemy bases. And it's just really, really easy. <laughs> I'm trying to make really uh, organized or really nice wall here to completely surround these pylons and photon cannons. But this stupid Terran enemy force decides to start attacking my gateway wall. 
And I'm actually going to lose one of my gateways here. That kind of sucked. And I just started moving out to the enemy base. I was going to... I was going to take it out, and then here comes these forces, and you'll notice that a lot. That's why it's smart to uh, get a get a force developed as soon as you, or not a force, get defenses developed at, at your bases as soon as you can, just so these surprise attacks don't get you. And actually, I don't even think that was an enemy force that came to attack my base. I think that was actually these units that were camped out by this bunker. I just happened to bait them over to my uh, gateways because one of my gateways was sticking out too far. So, that was my own fault. And then there's a Vespine Geyser uh, pickup right down in the bottom right corner here that I should make sure to get, but my probe just just doesn't go over there. I wasn't thinking. And then I'm going to transform these gateways into warp gates, and then I'm going to make sure to add them to my uh, number three hotkey. And we'll be able to uh, start warping in a ton of units all at the same time. And I'm going to make three robotics facilities. It's kind of over the top, but what the heck. And I'm going to, now I actually have a completely full uh, robotics facility of annihilators. And I'm going to pump out these annihilators really quickly and start filling up my supply. I'm going to end up supply blocking myself in a second here. Once again, supply blocking myself. Kind of unfortunate. But that is okay. It happens. So I have 2,000 gas right now. Something, what could I use? I think annihilators soak up a lot of gas, but yeah, I just, I've got a pretty big surplus of that Vespine gas. I should try to make better use of it. My minerals are starting to catch up, but not after I build these pylons. I'm going to spew a ton of these down so I have the maximum amount of supply, and I won't get supply blocked anymore. Well, until I'm maxed out, that is. And honestly, right now, I, I really could move out and attack that enemy base. And if I was you guys, I would I would advise doing that. But this is where it gets really awesome, is these energizers boosting all of my troops. <laughs> your forces will just, your forces are going to get so strong, and they're going to move so fast. You're just going to completely obliterate everything in front of you. And especially with these temporal fields, energy regenerates faster than you would think. So... I mean, you've got these energizers boosting all of your troops, and then, and then you drop down a couple of these temporal fields on the enemy uh, forces that are sitting in front of you, and then all of a sudden they can't attack you anymore. Plus, you have boosted attack speed and movement speed, so you just walk straight through everything, and it's really, really good combo. And then another thing that's really helpful is those energizers have the ability to turn into uh, pylon, basically, and they have a a field around them so you can start spawning in your warping in your troops right next to right in the midst of the battle works out super well I'm just getting everything all pumped up right here or in place and as you can see I turned one of my energizers into a pylon and there is the one dark templar that I'm probably going to end up spawning in <laughs> the, the lone dark templar not alone but he's alone from his kind and then this is just where it gets really good. My phoenixes are taking damage. I'm trying to move them around a little bit, but really I'm just using the attack attack command. I've got my ground units uh, focused to move forward, and I'm just focusing on moving my phoenixes. Those are the only units I'm really uh, microing right here. And this wasn't that effective of a temporal field use, but I did make sure to get the carriers and the void ray. And that's the main thing, because those uh, carriers uh, with their um, with their flyers they're going to be able to really distract your phoenixes, and that's something that you have to avoid. You don't want your uh, units to get start focusing down on their uh, smaller units, because those, those smaller units will end up getting your, your army killed, because, I mean, they don't do that much damage, and they can just keep respawning them. You have to really focus on that. But it worked out fine. I have almost my entire army energized right now. My phoenixes are just sitting. And then this is where I was not paying attention. And there's my base getting destroyed once again. This time there was a counterattack from the Terran enemy base. And I'm start I lost all the Photon Cannons that was defending my base. So I threw down a Temporal Field right away so I didn't lose any more of those gateways. And I'm going to uh, bring back my Phoenixes to my base to help, help defend back there. And then uh, spawn in some more Stalkers, or warp in some more Stalkers at the enemy base. 
and then I should be able to clean up the rest of this with my phoenixes. I shouldn't have all of my phoenixes uh, mashed so close together like this because if any splash damage hits, that's going to be the end of my phoenix army, just like that. For example, if there were ravens in that army and I wasn't paying attention, a couple uh, of those seeking missiles, seeker missiles would have just destroyed my entire phoenix army. So that would have not been good, and make sure not to do that in the future. Got to pay good attention to all of your units. I'm gonna take the rest of the, take out the rest of the Taldarian Protoss uh, probes. I'm gonna blink over my stalkers to make sure to take out those guys. And then the beauty of this is, once you take out these enemy bases, you weren't gonna have any more enemy waves uh, coming from that specific base. So the Protoss uh, waves that are coming from the left are gonna stop appearing, which is really nice. And unfortunately, I lost three of my gateways, so I'm going to start rebuilding those. And I'm going to start throwing down some more photon cannons. And this time, I'm actually going to throw down Kadaren Monoliths, because I want to make sure that if the enemy uh, comes again, that I'll actually be able to kill them this time, <laughs> and not just keep getting my base eaten away. So we've got the top enemy base cleared out. And now I have a ton of extra minerals and gas. I actually dropped down my gas levels a little bit, so that was good. Unfortunately, I lost one of my Celestial Locks. And yet again, here comes another wave of enemies. So, <laughs> before I could even spawn anything spawn anything in, I am going to use my... Or, before I could even warp any of those bases in, I got attacked. But, that's why I'm dropping down the, the Temporal Fields. And I'm going to start bringing back my entire army to kill these guys. My phoenixes are going to come in right away, and they'll be able to clear up the majority of this. I try to focus down the raven right away. Or, no, at last, I should have focused down the raven right away, because once again, I could have lost all my phoenixes. But I lucked out once again. Maybe it's just being on hard difficulty that they don't use their seeker missiles as much. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I, d I definitely should have lost my phoenixes there, or at least took a big hit to them. But... Got lucky once again. And I've got a Nexus and two Assimilators starting to warp in on that top supply line. And now we only have one enemy base left because there's only two of them on this map. And uh, there's a Protoss base, which we just took out. The Taldarim base, that is. And then we're going to take out the enemy Terrans. So there's going to be a lot of Spectres and uh, Ravens, Siege Tanks, and then uh, all sorts of goodies. Uh, battle Cruisers nasty stuff that we get to take out and I'm gonna be kind of careless with my units but it doesn't matter because I have so many minerals that you can just move your units straight in and destroy destroy everything that comes at you it's really nice just like this I mean I am doing a little bit of micro but I mean all, all I'm really focusing on is these phoenixes microing I will use the ability from those annihilators because I have so many of them in this oncoming attack but yeah, it's just, it's, at this point, you don't even have to worry. You could just spawn an army of zealots and stalkers and take out this enemy base. So, for those of you wondering, it's at the very bottom right corner of this base, or of this map. And there's a seeker missile for once, but it uh, did not work because I actually walked my units away from it. And I'm starting to pick up some of these siege tanks, and I'm being reckless with my <laughs> phoenixes right now. I'm just throwing them straight at the enemies. And I didn't have any vision here, so a lot of my units were dying going up this ramp without attacking anything. But now my phoenixes are here, so I'm dropping down some of these temporal fields. And this is where the base will just start to crumble. And I, I got lucky that I actually had some an energizer here, so I was able to turn one of my energizers into a, a pylon again. And, uh, I mean, I don't get any supply from that, en that energizer, but it does generate a field that it can warp in units. So, made sure to do that. And I'm gonna hopefully warp in some more energizers here in a second, just so in case that energizer dies, I can have more to turn into uh, acting pylons for me. And yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, there, the shadow cannon, that's what it's called. I use the shadow cannon. As you can see, they just focus, they can focus down air units and just look how fast the health disappears away from those units. So make sure to use that shadow cannon from those annihilators. And because of the shadow cannon ability, I just I'm really loving these units, the annihilators. I'm I'm definitely going to make good use of them in future missions to come as well. But yeah, they they are so good. 
And I'm not sure what the, the last mission in Legacy of the Void holds, but I'm definitely sure that, uh, well, pretty sure that Annihilators are going to be pretty helpful in that mission. And I just about have this base completely cleared out. And there, oh, one Spectre's trying to stop my Annihilators. He's not going to last long. Yep, there he goes. And I've got that Celestial Lock captured again. I was tempted just to finish off this mission after I got this Master Achievement, but there's no need now. I mean, here I am. I'm going to get the achievement in a second here. Huh, <laughs> maybe. I thought I was. So, yeah, here I was. I was just starting to expand. And, oh, yeah, there it is. There's one missile turret left. You take out this last missile turret, and then there it is. I aim to misbehave. So that's all it took, guys. Uh, bottom right corner of the map, and then the top left corner of the map. And once you have that completed, you don't even have to finish off the mission. You just call it quits from there. You'll the, the achievement will save, so you'll be good to go. As you can see, I aim to misbehave is right there. You get 10 achievement points from that. So there it was, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video, and I really hope you like this. Give it a like if you did, and post some comments in if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.